Hello everyone, I guess doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day, and today we are here with a Revenant's Guide for Old School RuneScape and my endless adventure to make as many guides as possible, so hopefully you guys enjoy. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, it helps the video do better and help other people learn the game, so it would mean a lot to me and others. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into the guide. So to start, are revs worth killing? In my opinion, it's a yes, because they can get you up to 95k ranging XP per hour, which is really good in terms of range XP. And on top of that, you can get upwards of 3 mil GP per hour. You could potentially get 4, 5, maybe even 6 mil GP per hour, depending on the method, and also if the wilderness is actually active at that time however on the low end you can also do very poorly here if you're a low level that's just coming out here so essentially it, it ranges a wide bit in terms of how much money you can make so it's worth it to at least try for yourself as far as the requirements there's a ton of different levels that revs come in so really you just have to be willing to engage in a wilderness based activity i know some people aren't really into that so if that's the case and you probably won't want to come on out here and if you're ever going into the wilderness i would also require that you throw your player attack options on hidden unless you know any better most people would be better off just having it on hidden that way you don't accidentally attack someone for whatever reason there are plenty of reasons that that could happen some that may not even be intentional so you want to turn it off unless you feel confident. Revs are weak to everything and even a little bit more susceptible to crush weapons. They attack with every combat style and their max hit can be up to a 30. However, this can be mitigated and there are a lot of different level brackets for revs, so not all of them will hit like this by any means. For GP per kill that you can expect, as you can see here from the nine different revs, it ranges anywhere from 3k kill up to 35k kill at the highest levels. If you're scald, you can add on an additional 20 to 30% per kill because you have a better chance of hitting of the higher drop tables. Here we have a Cyclops for an example, and all of the drop rates there are almost halved by being Scald. So you have a lot better chance of hitting that super rare drop table with a lot of the goodies. Keep in mind, if you're Scald, you protect zero items unless you have a plus one with your protect item prayer. If you're not Scald, you protect three, and you could protect four with the plus one from the prayer. Some amulets that will be of use here. The first one is the Amulet of Avarice. This is an amulet that Skulls you. It also notes your drops, and it has the salve effect, not yet but it soon will in the future so most of you watching this that will be the case the salve e is a necklace that you can get through the tarn mini quest this increases your melee accuracy and damage boosted here by 20 percent and the salve ei does the same effect for the salve but for every combat style and that requires 800,000 nightmare zone points and then the final piece of equipment that is the most important for revs is the bracelet of ethereum you can get this from the ge for 44k or you can also get one from killing revenants as well it negates 75% of the revenant's damage, and it also makes it so that revs are non-aggressive towards you. For each hit it deals on you, it will take your bracelet down one charge. You can charge this with ether that you can buy from the Grand Exchange or get from killing revs. Go ahead and throw 10 to 20 in your bracelet, and then from there, make sure to toggle your bracelet on to collect ether from dead revs. And as long as you're doing that, once you're killing the revs, you'll be picking up the ether through the bracelet, and that will be charging your bracelet, and so you'll never really have to worry about recharging it. If you do, then just make sure to stack up a little bit more, but I've never really been in that situation personally. For the melee options here, we have three different setups, a low, a medium, and high level setup. In all of these, I'm not really planning on being sculled, so keep in mind, if you do plan on being sculled, only bring one expensive item, unless you feel comfortable dying with more expensive items, then that's up to you. And of course, if you're going to skull up make sure you protect item but for these setups what we're trying to do is get a good melee weapon out there also have some decent bonuses for your boots and your cape and on top of that just making sure that you're not bringing too much gear out here you don't want to lose too much you already have to pay 100k to enter into the cave and then on top of that the bracelet of ethereum is going to be another 50k or so so you'll at least be risking a few hundred k so you don't want to up that anymore every setup comes with the salve e because you're going to need that for the boost that you get for revenants and preferably using crush weapons when possible however other weapons work just fine and then every setup will have a bracelet of ethereum that is the main contributor in negating the revenant damage without that you will be getting absolutely torn up getting more into the alternatives here you could bring initiate or proselyte gear if you wanted some more prayer based gear however that's not going to allow you to soak up as much damage when you're in the wildy like black dehyde wood and then along with that there are plenty of other options that you could bring out here we got spec weapon dense bulwark 
Amy Love Avarice, as I talked about before, and some other more med level options there for the melee setup. For the range setups here, we have a low, medium, and high level setup. Same thing goes again. I'm not assuming you're sculling in these. If you are, it's a lot more difficult with the range setup because the salve EI is so important, but maybe you have a lot of nightmare zone points and you could feel somewhat comfortable about dying with one. Really up to you how you want to go about that. For all these setups, though, going with mostly what would be a normal setup for range, nothing here seems too out of the ordinary. Obviously, all of the items are listed down below, so give those a peek as needed. The only thing that may be a bit foreign to a lot of people is the weapon for the high level setup with the Craw's bow. This is the range alternative to the Vigorous Chain Mace that I showed in the other setup, and essentially both of those weapons are weapons that are boosted when being used in the wilderness. They do cost Revenant Ether to be able to charge it in the first place, so there is a little bit of downside in that regard. It will be higher risk, however, it will be much higher reward if you are not dying out here. So we have good mage defense and also good range offense, which is good, and and in addition to that, there are a lot of other added options that you could bring here as well. Some higher options and then also some lower options there with the rune crossbow and different bolts. So the rev cave is massive and houses a lot of different revenants, each one getting its own room essentially, with a lot of agility shortcuts in between. The higher agility, the more likely you are to escape from PKers. The red line indicates the 30 line, which is the highest level in the wilderness so you can teleport instantly out of. If you're north of that, you'll have to run south before being able to teleport out of the wildy. So keep that in mind when choosing where you'd like to go. The lower level revenants are typically located in the south, however there are a few more towards the middle of the cave. The med level revenants are scattered throughout the entire cave. Going towards the ones that are more to the north will allow you to be away from other people. There will be less competition, however you will be at more risk if a PKer shows up. And then for the high level revs, all of them are located north of the 30 line. A little bit more risky. Personally, I actually like being by the northern door with the knight and the dragon because you can hop in and out of the door and that can be a good way to get away from PKers, but yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a bit more risky if you want to go for the high level revenants. Then to get there, there are three different entry points, one on the north, middle, and south. The best way to get there for the southern entrance is through the burning amulet teleport to the bandit camp. The second best option to get there would be the rev cave telly to the northern area. And then the third would be the teleport to the lava maze through the burning amulet. So now moving on over to the inventory and also an example trip. First things first, whenever you're going out here with your inventory and your gear, make sure that you're not losing anything too crazy. If I protect item, I'll keep that salve amulet EI. So again, a little under 500k total risk, which isn't too bad. For the inventory, I have a Din's Bulwark to escape from PKers. I also have a Divine Ranging Potion to boost up. I have some High Alks as well. You don't have to bring them if you don't want to. Some people don't even stay out on their trips long enough to need it, so you'll have to test that yourself. On top of that, I have a Royal Seed Pod to teleport away. This can be obtained through the Monkey Madness 2 quest. A Looting Bag, which you can buy off the Grand Exchange in noted form, or you can kill monsters for. Burning Amulet to teleport out there, along with some Cerebrews and Restores. Personally, I recommend having Cerebrews and Restores even if you aren't going to be using Prayer for your Rev Killing because it's just good for whenever PKers come to be able to get away a little better. If you didn't plan on using Prayer while you're out here, maybe bank two or three of the Restores and just only bring one or two. And then beyond that, just a bunch of Sharks and some Karam ones for combo eating, but that is really all you're going to need. Final little check to make sure that your attack options are on Hidden. I was attacking people recently because sometimes I get a little crazy, but I'm going to go ahead and teleport on out to the Bandit Camp and start from the southern side as we walk through a lot of the different places that you can kill them. So starting on the south side over here, a lot of the lower level revenants are going to be at the lower level wildy spots, just kind of makes sense. This is a nice little imp location if you want to go ahead and kill the imp. A lot of people do do that because they're very accessible only being level 7. This is the lowest level medium spot that's very good with the orcs right here back to back. However, because of that, there's a lot of PKing here and there's a lot of competition for these spots. A little bit to the northeast, we have another room that's essentially the same with two orc spots in here a little less competition since this is further north and then essentially the entire western side of the cave is really good for med levels that don't want a lot of competition there's a greater demon room in here there is a dark beast room over here on top of pyrophenes in here and to the north there is a greater demon and cyclops location so all four of these rooms can be really useful for anyone that's more of a med level and doesn't want a lot of competition because the further north you go the less there will be of course out here you're above level 30 wilderness so it is a little scary. Keep in mind that the Rev Cave is a 1 plus 1 combat location. That's what this little thing signifies here. That means that PKers can attack you even if you are in combat with a Rev. So you cannot escape them just by boxing an NPC or something like that. 
but that also means since it's only one plus one that clans can't come and pile you very easily. Sometimes there will be teams where a different PK will have a different designated role. Some people may ice barrage you while others may use teleport block. You really just have to recognize the situation and act accordingly. Now that we're up here, I'll show some example kills. So if you are gonna be praying any range boosting prayers, go ahead and do that and also drink up on your ranging potion. You should be doing a lot of damage here considering revs don't have a great amount of defense at all. So that's why I do recommend that you use rooms that are less frequented. That way you can maximize your DPS and your overall loot that you're getting per hour. Revs have gone through a lot of updates recently in terms of their mechanics. Their drop table's a bit better than it was. They also respawn a bit faster than they did and they don't heal as much. So they're a lot better than they recently were. However, when they initially came out, they were a little bit more better than they are now. I'd say it's at a good medium at the moment. If you want to easily input things into your looting bag, you can just open it and go ahead and pick stuff up from there. One thing I will say is like you see over here, there's a lot of blighted items that they drop out here and blighted items are items that can only be eaten or used in the wilderness. So for that, you don't want to have your looting bag open. You'd rather than close it and go ahead and pick them up and use them accordingly. It is one thing that allows you to keep your inventories going a lot longer whenever you're getting these types of drops because they will drop up mana rays and they'll also drop super restores. So you have both the health and the prayer getting restored on these trips. It is one of the downsides also of using the Amulet of Avarice because your trips won't last as long. Um, you'll certainly get more drops that you can then bank, but you'll also have to bank more often considering you'll only have the food in your inventory and not the food and drops that you're getting from the revs as well. As far as getting away from PKers, I do have a video that teaches you the basics on how to feel competent and somewhat safe within the wilderness. So that can teach you a lot. But on top of that, for revs in particular, I would say that you want to diagnose the situation because again, like I mentioned earlier, you're either going to be getting attacked by a single person or a clan. And if it's a clan, then you likely know that you're going to get teleport blocked. So if that's the case, you know that the South isn't really going to be your friend. There's really nothing you can do once you get to level 30. If it's just a solo PKer, odds are they're not going to be teleport blocking you. And if that's the case, just teleport immediately or run to level 30 and teleport as fast as possible. Having high agility allows you a lot of different options in here that also might deter PKers. Being able to make it over some of those may put a gap between you and them forever. And if that's not working, I'd say be unpredictable. Like right now, I'm just running to the north for fun, but a lot of PKers assume that you're going to run to the south, so they'll preemptively run to the south. And if that's the case, then you have a lot more distance for you if you want to run to the north. And if you get gap, then you can go ahead and log out. That's another option that you can go about it. If you are teleport blocked for five minutes and you're at the rev caves, I mean, really, there's not a ton of hope. You could run all the way to the southern part of the cave, enter out through into the regular wilderness, and then continue to run or get to the Virox Enclave. That could be your saving grace if you're on the south side. If you're on the north side and you get in a situation with a PKer, what I recommend is going up to this opening up here. If it's just a solo PKer, then whenever you go out through this opening, he'll have to then guess if you're going back out or back in, and you can basically just go back and forth between these openings without having him attack you as long as you're timing it right. It can be a bit tricky and he definitely might hit you here and there, but over time you can start to plan for what he's doing and it's just a really fun game to play with PKers and eventually once they haven't attacked in a long enough time, you can just log out. Now the higher level revenants are no different than the ones to the south, they just have a lot more HP and are going to take a lot longer to kill. The dragon location is the most heavily camped by PKers because you can scout it from over there and over here and up there, so there's just a lot of different spots that you can come in at and not very easy to get on out of here if you're someone that's just killing revs. Oh, and we're getting PK'd. All right, so this is a nice example to go ahead and show you how to use the exit. Definitely meant to set this up, so appreciate this guy for helping me do so. Oh, he, he actually wanted no part of the Din's bulwark. All right, that is the power of the Din's, baby. Typically on these trips, you won't have to worry too much about food, considering you'll be getting a good amount of blighted supplies, and once you start to run out of super stores or prayer potions, at that point, you probably want to bank anyways, considering you have enough loot in your inventory, and you don't want to risk any more if a PK were to come. You also always want to prepare as if a PKer is going to show up because if you have low food and one does and you aren't prepared then essentially it's a guaranteed kill for them and free loot and I always tell people if you want to switch out the god coif and god boots for maybe some snakeskin instead it will make your DPS a little less however people will be less inclined to PK you so there's a little give and take there and if you find you're getting PK too much maybe you could change that up but revs are really just an easy way to farm some money into the game and I also think a great way to go ahead and train your range a lot of people don't think of that but I mean you do have to train your range and it is going to make the rest of your PVM and boss experience 
experience better. So if you can come out here and get really good XP, because you're always boosted up, you're always praying some sort of range prayer, you also are making enough money to the point where you can justify using some higher tier gear than maybe you would. So with all those things combined, it makes the money here that much more worthwhile. As I mentioned earlier, you could get upwards of three to five mil per hour. I think the average person probably is gonna make one to two mil per hour, especially once you consider how much they're gonna get PK'd and potential items that they could lose on their journey here. It's really a money-making method with a lot of different outcomes, a lot of different styles of doing it, a lot of variation in terms of the players you'll find out here and the fights that you'll get into. So I think it's a pretty fun and exciting different side of the game that a lot of people definitely should try out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the guide. If you did, make sure to leave a like on top of that. If you want to see more videos like this as soon as I go live, make sure to subscribe. And with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh, peace.